was six years old, you could ask me what I was going to be when I grew up and I would tell you, I'm going to be a writer. I maintained the ability to write and grew in that talent throughout the years. Uh, by high school, it became more free, you know, free writing and poetry. And, and then I started freestyling and rapping with my friends and um, probably started falling off the path. You know, um, I was pretty determined that, you know, school and college wasn't my pathway because I just couldn't. I, I didn't have support to do it. I ended up dry, or taking a bus from Bellevue, Washington to downtown Seattle every day just to go to the Small Business Administration and learn from the SCORE folks, that's the retired business executives and owners who will go and volunteer their time there to learn how to start a business. And then my 18th birthday, I went and filed my very first business license. because I could make jewelry at the time. That's what I did and quickly realized I didn't have the money to maintain that overhead and decided what's the next best thing I'm good at. And that's cleaning. And so I started a little cleaning business, um, went back to school for interior design and did that for a couple of years, got into some top fashion schools and realized very quickly that I could not afford to go to any of them. <laughs> And just kind of got mad at the system all over again and was like, screw this, you know, let me get back into my entrepreneurship. Um, and lo and behold, I was working as uh, an interior designer. And uh, one day, you know, this this guy just walked into our showroom. Let me back up. A week prior to this guy coming in, a friend said, why don't you make your green cleaning business a janitorial business. Then you can pay for school yourself. I have a friend who does it and he's got a lot of money. The next week, this guy walks in, he becomes a client and he's writing his information down in his ER, his URL and his email says building maintenance in it. So I says, well, what do you do? And he says, oh, I own a janitorial. So the next thing you know, he makes me his protege. I go and work in his company to build out the construction cleanup side of it. So meaning we go clean up job sites and whatnot and get them ready for public use after they've been built. And he was a black owner and he brought me into the realm of advocacy. So I found myself sitting on boards. Um, working with everyone from the governor on down to city mayors and just started to really see the disparities between, you know, black construction companies and white construction companies, which kind of led me down even more of a rabbit hole of the injustices that occur economically between black Americans and our counterparts. And I was given an opportunity to um, write business plans for Black companies to get money from, you know, community development funds. And so um, went from, you know, being in poverty to overnight making six figures. Um, and it really changed my life and the trajectory of my career. Now, that's not to say that it has been easy. It was definitely a painful path. And there were a lot of moments where I was like, I'm done. I'm just going to go and, and be a designer now. You know, I'm going to go do art and like get away from people and justice. And it would always pull me back in. And so a couple of years ago, when we were in the middle of the pandemic and we were going through all of that crisis with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, um, it really hit me that like, no, I'm I'm in this for black people, right? I'm in here. I'm here to use my gifts to make sure that I'm helping close a wealth gap, to make sure that I'm, you know, promoting our economic wellness and power so that we have a voice. Definitely did not think this is what I would be doing probably even five years ago. Um I just, I saw myself as like this free spirit and this entrepreneur who had no limits and no glass ceilings. Um, but now uh, I, I look back in hindsight as 2020 and I realized that 
you know, I've just been preparing for it my whole life and that it's it's a calling, you know. I if I want to see the change, I have to be a part of it. And being a part of that change does not mean that I'm going to get to see it. It means that my child will. It means that I'm living the future that my ancestors, my mother, my father paved the way for me to have, you know, um, they're not getting to enjoy what they built the same way that I am, but that's how this works. Right. And so um, it's a long game. And in order to play it, you have to be willing to be somebody and be something.